Guys, this is going to be a very, very quick video on chapter 5. Um, I haven't made this, this type of video yet. Um, I thought by you just attending the lectures and also attending the ADU, as well as just giving you some uh, problems to do, that might be good enough. But um, some students have still come to me and asked some interesting questions, uh, indicating to me that that you, you're still not very sure about what's happening with chapter five. Well, maybe many of you are, but but maybe one or two of you aren't. So I'm just going to give a short five or six minute overview quickly. Okay. So <clears throat> chapter five says equilibrium of a rigid body. What was chapter four about, guys? Chapter four, if you can see, it says force system resultant. So all we did in chapter four was we looked at resultant forces. So if we if we had some structure, right? Imagine that's a structure, and we had forces acting on it. All we learned in chapter four was what? We learned how to calculate resultant forces, right? Or we learned how to calculate resultant moments. Right? We learned how to do that. So essentially all we were doing, <clears throat> we were looking at how to calculate the applied forces and applied moments. And we could then replace the whole system with an equivalent force and couple, or we could replace the whole system with an equivalent force. But the point is, we were only essentially looking at applied, applied forces, what was being applied, right? So for example, if you had a beam like this, right? And this beam is attached to the wall at some, in some fashion. And we had some forces acting on it. And we had a couple moments acting. We were able to take this whole system and replace this whole system with a single force and couple at any point that we chose. <clears throat> or a single force at, at the specific point along the beam. But <clears throat> I'm not sure if we asked the question, why, um, why was the beam not accelerating? If we, were, if we were able to replace this whole thing with a single force, right, acting there, why was it not accelerating if there's a force? Isn't, isn't force equals to mass ac times acceleration? So if there's a force, then there must be an acceleration. This beam must move. Well, yes, but that's where chapter 5 comes in. Chapter 5, we now... Uh, we begin to look at the, th the, the parts of the beam that are actually reacting to the applied forces, right? The reaction forces, okay? Does that make sense? So if, if I take this system and I replace it by an equivalent force, you've done that in chapter 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, right? You get equivalent forces, equivalent force and couple systems, whatever. You've, my point is you've, you've calculated resultant forces that are being applied to the beam, right? Then, then what actually happens is we now need to analyze uh, these areas where the beam is in contact with the wall, with the floor, because these are the areas, these are the points that are resisting and reacting to the applied force. So that this beam remains in equilibrium. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. You have an applied force, but in order for the beam to remain in equilibrium, you need some reaction forces. So you've got applied forces. That's really chapter four. And then, in, then we've got now reaction forces that's really chapter five where where applied and reaction gives us equilibrium okay <clears throat> i hope that's hope that's helping so now uh what for a for a rigid bot for a particle do you recall for a particle that's chapter three what do we need for equilibrium? We just need the sum of the forces equal to zero, which means the sum of the forces in the x equals zero, sum of the forces in the y equals zero. But for a rigid body, this is chapter five, for rigid body equilibrium, let's, let's now call this 
rigid body. Remember, this is particle. Particle equilibrium. Right, it's just a particle. All we need to know is, are the forces in the x and y, the sum of the forces in the x and y equal to zero. But for a body, we not only, sorry, my calculator dropped. It's not the end of the world. It's not an earthquake. Don't worry. Um, in order for a rigid body to be in equilibrium, we need the sum of the forces to be equal to zero and the sum of the moments to be equal to zero. So we need both a um, translation equilibrium, meaning straight line motion, right? Straight line motion. And we need rotational equilibrium. Okay? Meaning, meaning if I apply a moment, an applied moment, I need to have a, a reaction moment, right? If I have an applied force, I need to have a reaction force to keep this body in equilibrium. What does equilibrium mean? It means acceleration is zero. Okay? It's not moving. Okay, I know acceleration, you, you can have a body that moves with a constant velocity. That is ex absolutely true. But this is this course is called statics, which means that... Um, that when we say acceleration equals zero, we mean that it's just resting on the table, like my coffee. Look at my coffee cup, just resting there. Okay? So all the forces and moments and everything acting on this, on this cup, the applied forces are being counteracted by reaction forces. Okay? Okay. Now, one last quick, very quick thing. Okay? This is turning into a 10-minute video. So what I was saying was, let's let's just have a look now. So look at just look at this problem. So here we've got a beam and we've got an applied force, 1,200 newton. That's the can you see that's the only force, so it's the resultant force. But why is the beam not moving? The beam's not moving because it has a, a support reaction, a support reaction. And in this case, this type of support reaction is called a, a fixed support. So. When I'm trying to solve now for any unknowns, right, I need to draw a free body diagram and I need to replace the support reaction with the correct forces and moments, okay? So the basic idea that we need to ask when replacing the support reaction with forces and moments is this. Does this support reaction stop a force? In, in the x direction? If the answer is yes, you put in a force. Okay? Does this type of support reaction resist a force in the vertical direction? Yes, it does. Good. So we put in a force. Does this type of support reaction um, resist a moment? Right? If I apply that 1200, it causes an applied moment. Does that type of reaction resist a moment yes it does then i need to put in a moment so in my free body diagram i've replaced that support reaction with an x force a y force and a moment okay now the other question you may ask is how do i know which direction to put that in why is that that way and ax is that way well let me tell you and why is m a going counterclockwise well let me tell you it does not matter it does not matter which direction you put a y and ax you can put AY down, AX to the right, or MA can be going clockwise. When you finally solve for any unknowns using your sum of the forces in the e equal to zero, sum of the moments equal to zero, then if you get a calculate AY to be minus whatever, then you know your arrow is in the wrong direction. If you calculate AX to be minus, then you know your arrow is in the, in the wrong direction. If you calculate your AY and AX to be a positive value, then you know I've chosen the right direction. Similarly for the moment. If I choose MA counterclockwise and I get a positive number, then I've chosen it in the correct direction. If I get a negative, then the, it actually means the moment is actually acting in the opposite direction. Okay, I hope that's clear. So guys, based on this type of example, you need to understand how to replace all these connections, right? So these are supports for rigid bodies. How do I replace that? Um, a cable, I replace it with a single force. How do I replace a weightless link? I replace it with a single force. A roller, 
How do I replace a roller in my free body diagram? I replace it with a force. Just ask yourself, guys, does the roller, can the roller stop a force in the, in this normal direction? Absolutely. So I need to, I need to put in a force there. Can a roller stop a force in this, in that direction, which is parallel to the surface? No. If I apply a force here, the roller is just going to go. So the roller is not resisting forces in this direction. What about a rocker? Right? The rocker can only resist forces in the normal direction. It can't resist a force there. So you only replace it with a force like that. What about a smooth contacting surface? It can only resist a force like that. And you go through all of these. The important ones to know are pins. A pin connection. If I apply a, a force in the vertical, it will, re it will resist vertical direction. If I apply a force in the horizontal, it will resist. But if I apply a moment, Right? Just go look at a door. A door has a pin, a hinge. That's a pin connection. If I apply a moment uh, on the door and about that point, that pin connection doesn't resist any moment. So I can't draw in the moment here. Okay? And here is a fixed a member fixed connected to collar on smooth rod. Okay, I see they've they've left out all kinds of little words. But anyways, if the only, the only way that this type of connection can resist forces is in that direction because if I apply a force in that direction, then this type of connection will resist me. But if I apply a force in that direction, it, it'll just slide, right? So I can't put in a, a, a reaction force there. And if I try to apply a moment, then that, that, that type of connection will also apply a reaction moment, okay? And then this is the fixed support. This is the most constrained, if you will. If I apply a force in the X, it will resist me. If I apply a force in the Y, it will re react. It will resist me. And if I apply a moment, it will it will um, react. Okay, so guys, I, I hope that this is clear. Um, so if you go and look at these types of examples now, you've got this, um, what is it called, a lever. So you've got a link here, you've got a spring here, you've got a pin connection, and you've got a force. If you draw the free body diagram, a link just has a force in that direction. A spring just re reacts with a force. And a pin, you've got to replace the pin with an AX and an AY. Okay? So um, I know the test is tomorrow, but I hope this has somewhat helped you. Okay, cheers.